Well, hello, Convention of State supporters. My name is Andrew Woodruff. I will be your host for this episode of COS Live, and I am joined by the fabulous Rita Dunaway. Rita, how are you? I'm great. Good to be with you again, Andrew. It is a pleasure with you, too. We have a jam-packed uh, episode of COS Live today, and I'm so excited to our interview. But before, uh, there's something that we want to bring up right at the beginning because I think it's so crucial. Are you subscribing to our social media platforms that we are on? If you're not, please go over there. Go to Parler, Facebook, Instagram, MeWe, Gab, uh, uh, YouTube, wherever you're getting your social media buzz, it's so important that you follow us there because you need to stay in the know for what is going on with Convention of States. You need to be ready to receive calls to actions in your state it's so important that you are there. Um, and it's a great resource for you to share Convention of States information and posts with your friends and family. So please go follow us on social media. And while you're at it, make sure that you join our email list. We are living in a time where censorship and deplatforming is a real thing. If you've been watching the news at all the last month or so, it has been at the tip of everyone's mind. Who is going to get censored? What a uh, political organization or platform is going to get uh, deplatformed. So make sure that you uh, get ahead of this by being part of our email list. Well, we have a very exciting interview with a with the Montana state senator. We're going to uh, talk about uh, Montana possibly becoming the 16th state to pass the COS resolution. Uh, he's going to give us an update on what is going on in Montana. We are joined by Montana State Senator Tom McGilvray, who is the lead sponsor for the Convention of States Resolution in Montana. Senator, thank you for joining us, and how are you doing today, sir? Yeah, good. Uh, thanks for having me on today. It's an absolute pleasure. So I wanted to jump into my first question. Um, why is it that you decided to not only support, but to become a champion for Convention of States in Montana? Well, it uh, happened with a COS uh, supporter reaching out to me last January. And, you know, before uh, this time that he can talk to me, I really had not known much about Convention of States. I had heard of an Article 5 convention before, and just based on what people had told me that were opposed, I was thought, well, probably not a good idea. But since he came to me very sincerely and asked me to look at it, I uh, made a commitment and promised him I would review it and get back to him. And frankly, the more I studied the issue and looked at the history of the issue, I studied, studied Nadelson's work, bought his book, and the more I dived into it, I came to sort of an epiphany, if you will, where I realized that, hey, I've been pushing back against government spending, uh, federal deficits, and just the total government overreach totalitarianism, if you will, of the federal government for so long and been so frustrated with it, the epiphany was, hey, the state legislatures have something to do with this. That myself as a state senator, I can introduce this resolution and we can have an impact. It's our responsibility. And if I didn't do this, I felt that I was culpable and complicit in the disaster that was happening in Washington. Wow. I hope all of our volunteers listen to this interview, and I hope they all just heard you say that what initially brought you to study Convention of Dates and introduce the resolution in the Montana Senate was a citizen activist reaching out to you. I hope everyone hears that and understands and recognizes that they can make a difference. Senator, how does Convention of States fit into the other principles that you bring into your public service for the state of Montana? Well, I think it has everything to do with it. I'm a limited government uh, senator, legislator, had been for over 16 years. And when you look at the primary tenets of Convention of States, you know, limiting the power and jurisdiction of the federal government, imposing fiscal restraints, these are issues that I, uh, it's all it's what I'm all about. And so the Convention of States is absolutely critical if you believe in limited government. It's the really the only option we have less that I see because I actually talked to our state senator, Senate or our US Senator, Senator Gaines, 
about Convention of States, and he told me flat out, he said, Tom, it is impossible for Washington to fix this problem. It is, you know, it's going to have to be the states, and I see it every to do with everything. You know, we, we in Montana, we whine about the federal government interfering in our water, our air, our land, our wildlife, the grizzly bear, the sage grouse, ad nauseum. And this is critical for us to push back against Washington, or otherwise we're just gonna be a fiefdom, a vassal state of Washington. Hmm. And Senator, you were in the room with several COS Montana volunteers who drove all the way to the Capitol to speak in support mm -hmm. of the COS resolution. How important are Montana volunteers to this process? And um, would do you have something yeah. that you could say about the Montana team? Well, I can't say enough good Montana team. They're phenomenal. I've been working with them for months now, and they're sincere. They're they're driven. Uh, these people, Montana is a big state, so they drove six, five, six hours to get to our hearing. And I think we had close to 30 proponents that were just your average Montana citizens. And I can't say enough good about them. They're sincere, they care about the nation, they care about our country, uh, they care about Montana. They're just phenomenal. And I have to say the only opponents were the JBS people and they were paid staff primarily. So our representation for proponents in the hearing were just Montana folk. It was pretty good, pretty phenomenal. Well, that was just about 10 days ago that this Montana Senate committee heard testimony on our Article 5 application, which you are sponsoring the Montana Senate. So, of course, you were there to introduce it, and then you offered a closing remarks on the resolution, and you were so articulate. I wish that we could pay that entire um, committee hearing so everyone could see all of your remarks. But for now, I just want to share this brief one minute clip of that time. Article 5, the Convention of States, the Convention for Proposing Amendments is our state's legislatures, our opportunity to have a serious impact on what happens in Washington. I don't have to go to Washington. We in this committee hearing have the power, the ability, along with other states in this country, to say to Washington, enough. Through Article 5, the founders gave us a tool to push back and if we don't, we are culpable and complicit in what happens in Washington. And the people behind me are going to be proponents, and they are going to share with you their deep conviction that this is the peaceful, constitutional, well-thought-out solution to the serious issues that create a delicate and critical, critical situation in our nation. In your closing, Senator, you really spoke to the bipartisan problem that we have in Washington, D.C. In this day and age, we're so divided as Americans along political lines, but we like to say that the real fight in this country is not between Democrat and Republican. It's between we, the people, the American citizens, and the Washington, D.C. elites. And in fact, what we found at Convention of States in polling is that Americans really are united when they're asked about an Article 5 convention to limit federal power. We've done polling in about a dozen states and about two thirds of voters support the idea. And that includes Democrats, independents and Republicans. Why do you think it is, Senator, that all Americans tend to gravitate toward Convention of States? Well, I think, first of all, you got to realize that most Americans feel Washington is hopelessly broke, broken. And they, every American knows that you got to balance your budget at some point. They realize that there's a consequence to overspending your revenue forever. And I think that most Americans get the basic financial problem that Washington has and, you know, most Americans are aware that everything that Washington is doing, like from screwing in a light bulb into your house or buying a dishwasher, Washington is getting a higher and higher cost for us all. And they're tired of it. And that's why. And I think that they get it that we need term limits. You know, these people serve too long. 
there's a time for everything. There's a time to start and a time to stop. And too many in Washington don't know when the time to stop is. And I think it's just common sense, really. And they realize that the survival of the nation is uh, for the nation to survive. You're going to need a convention. That's the only way we can affect Washington. The people have to do it. Mm. As a state legislator, how important is it for constituents to be in contact with you? And speaking to yeah. the patriots who are tuning in right now, who want to make a difference um, because they love their country, what are the best ways that citizens can truly be heard and make an impact? Well, in Montana, I can't say enough. We've received everybody, every legislator, there's 150 of us up here. Everybody I talk to is getting a lot of email on convention of states. And interestingly enough, when I started lobbying for it back before the session even started, probably last spring, summer, everybody I talked to, senators said, and, and these were all unsolicited comments, hey, Tom, I get a lot of email on this. And so it's just not during session or just not when the hearing was coming up. Senators and representatives were getting a lot of email already. And I can't say enough. The first thing to be emailing, emailing your your senator or your representative, letting them know where you stand. And I think another step, if people feel confident, and I think they, they just need to call their senators. Um, most Montana senators or representatives are very accessible. We pride ourselves in being accessible to our constituents. And negative or positive, I like to hear calls. If I get a call from somebody, I want to talk to them and hear what they have to say. And I think if you're comfortable with this, call some of the senators that had to know on convention and, and let them know how you feel. It's totally appropriate and important. You make such a great point that our state legislators are really accessible to us, unlike members of Congress typically are. And in fact, that is one of the main reasons why the bulk of governing power was vested in the state governments, not in the federal government. Now, most people know that the president and members of Congress swear an oath to defend the Constitution. But interestingly, state legislators also take an oath, not only to the state Constitution, but also to the U.S. Constitution. Yeah. Senator, what does that oath mean to you and your service in the Montana Senate? Yeah, thanks, Rita. Good question. Article 6 says that we swear an oath to the United States Constitution. We also swear an oath to the Montana Constitution. So my opinion is what we see our opponents say is that we need to we need to follow the Constitution. We need to obey the Constitution. This point is made by them over and over and over again. And then it's like this big whisper campaign that, that says, but not Article 5. And that just infuriates me. It vexes me that you know we're told that we have to follow the Constitution. We make an oath to it, and then we have all these excuses and fear mongering about why Article Five is not part of that that oath. It is part of our oath, and we have an obligation to follow it and pursue it. And the state legislatures, as I've already said, are complicit in Washington with Washington's overreach, malfeasance. Uh, dictatorial edicts from the sovereigns that are now called pres that are called presidents. We have to push back, and that's our job. And if, if we're not pushing back, we're not following our constitution. It means a lot. Mm. So, uh, tell us a little bit about yourself outside of being a state legislator, because um, unlike Congress, being in the state legis legislature is not a full time gig. So. Tell us a little bit about your background and what inspired you to run for office. Well, politics, I guess, is in your blood. Uh, you know, my dad, I remember him, that kind of ironic, uh, dad arguing with his friends over the Montana Constitution when it was rewritten in 1972. So something about that clicked in my mind. I wore, you know, we played war as kids. We wore uh, blue badges. I remember wearing Governor Tim Bag. Cox uh, political button out there playing with my friends. And so it's been part of my uh, part of my makeup DNA. So, but to answer your question, you know, I'm a dad, I have three kids, uh, been married to, married to my wife, Margaret, for, you know, 45 years almost. 
And um, I care about my grandkids. You know, if we don't get a handle on this, we have, we're in deep trouble. So I ran for the legislature simply to re- represent the gotten man, the taxpayer out there and the families out there, the moms and dads. They're working hard every day. They take care of their kids. They try to get them educated. You know, they like to go fishing and hunting on the weekends. Uh, and they need someone in the legislatures to represent them. You know, we have lobbyists all the time representing special interests up here, but my job is to represent constituents. My job is to represent the common forgotten person out there that if we don't get a handle again on our federal spending, uh, their money's going to be worthless. And as a financial advisor for nearly 30 years, I know what it means to have fiat currency and uh, deficits, you know, what it means to have $3 trillion in debt and where that's taking us in the future. So that's why I'm involved, because I care about people. I love the state of Montana, and I want to make a difference. We are so grateful for people like you who are in public service because you do want to represent the forgotten man, the, the regular citizens. So thank you. Before we let you go, we have a lot of viewers on the edges of their seats wanting to know what is going to happen in Montana. So can you tell us what you expect to happen in the next several days or weeks with the Convention of States resolution in the Montana Senate? Well, as you guys know, um, the resolution was tabled in committee. So that means that if we're going to get it on the Senate floor and get it over to the House, we've got to have a majority of the senators, 26, to vote yes on a procedural motion to bring it out of committee. Uh, we don't quite have that many votes yet, but we're close. And so uh, I think most of the COS folks in Montana know who we need to influence. Uh, the ones that voted no in committee, we need to change some of those minds. But frankly, we don't have to change all their minds because I think we have 22, 23 senators already that have committed to a procedural motion to move it to the floor. We just need a few more. I think we can get that. And... Um, so that's that's the bottom line right there. Well, Senator McGilvery, we are hoping and praying that you get to the threshold you need to get it out of committee. Um, thank you so much for joining us on this interview. It was a pleasure being to speak with you, and we look forward to Montana hopefully being the 16th state that could pass the COS resolution. Yeah, thanks for having me on today. Blessings to you guys. Thank you. Well, it's time for us to sign off. Rita, why don't you get us going? Sure. To our viewers tonight, if you are frustrated with corrupt politics, if you're sick and tired of having your rights steamrolled, know this. This is a plan. The American founders were brilliant. They knew this might happen, and they gave us a solution for such time as this. That's why Convention of States is working to use Article 5 of the Constitution to put the people back in charge. COS equips American patriots to reclaim our self-governance. The movement is well underway with 15 states already on board so far. 34 is that magic number. When we get to convention, we're going to send the career politicians packing, force DC to use our money wisely, and place meaningful limits on federal overreach. So go to conventionofstates.com, sign and share the petition. Join your local Convention of States team. Help us to make history and change D.C. forever. And after you find the petition, don't forget to follow us on social media. Go to Rumble, uh, MeWe, Gab, Parler, uh, Facebook. Well, you're already subscribed to Facebook, I would assume. Uh, or subscribe to YouTube wherever you are getting your social media buzz. Make sure to include COS um, there as well. Um, and then don't forget to check out the Battle Cry with Mark Meckler at 8 p.m. Eastern time every Sunday. And uh, we will see you next for another episode of COS Live. Same time, same place, 6 p.m. Eastern time right here on Facebook. Until then, we have a country to save. So it's time to get back to work. And remember, if you're looking for the person who is going to restore the republic, look in the mirror because it's going to be you. All right. That's all we have time for. Bye. The federal government has bailed on we the people long ago. The government's conduct has been disgraceful, whether it be from the Congress or the courts. 
This government, well, beyond any shadow of doubt at this point, has grown on the consent of the governed. We saw evidence of this in the last election. We saw further evidence of the frightening opening days of the Biden administration and their extremist policies. But what is our course, we the people? The first step is to reign in Washington. Now, I don't want you guys to feel badly. You, you don't owe them anything. Remember, they build on you first. As we've established, they really don't care what you think anyway. Now that the socialists are in control, they scarcely acknowledge you exist. During for communist China, Russia, and Iran has the Democrat socialists full attention now. So your job and the job of your family and friends and like-minded neighbors is to learn the name of your state representative and your state senator. You must let them know you wish for your state to participate in an Article 5 Convention of States. This is a mechanism put into place into our Constitution by our founding fathers in preparation for the coming of what we're seeing today when Washington, D.C. abandons we the people. At this convention, amendments will be proposed to tie the hands of the out-of-control, big-spending government in D.C. By the time this convention would convene, our debt will be soaring way out of control. So there will be vigorous debate inside this convention as to which amendment will be offered by state legislators. A balanced budget amendment, repeal of the 17th Amendment, or term limits on federal office holders. Notice I said state legislators. These people are generally close to you and your family, both physically and in your value system. They also can't hide from you in some faraway capital. Unless you live in a state like New York, California, these legislators have to live in the world they create for you and your family. In other words, as a general rule, they fear your ability to remove them from office more than your alleged representatives in D.C. do. An Article 5 Convention of the States empowers your state reps to rein in your federal reps. Get it? The states are the best defense for people who are endeavoring to do what we're trying to do. Save the United States of America for our children and grandchildren. Because a USA that is free, strong, and prosperous is worth fighting for, right?